Hello and welcome to Power Play, the show where we bring you face to face with the most influential policy makers of the country. I am Pranjal Sharma. Today we are going to be talking to Dr. C.P. Joshi. He is the Union Minister for Road, Highways and Transport. Sir, thank you very much for being with us. Uh, this has been a critical area for reforms and development uh, for the government. Uh, you have taken charge uh, a few months ago. What are your key priorities? You are aware about this. The Prime Minister has announced that every day we will construct 20 kilometer roads. That was our aim. Unfortunately, uh, but for the economic recession, we could not achieve this, this target. Now we are intent that by end of this uh, two, three years which we have in our government, we will able to address this issue. So first and foremost priority is to award as much as uh, be, uh, uh, construction uh, award so that we able we were able to achieve 20 km per day that's one area where we are concentrating the other area which uh, is more important that we have to give confidence to the uh, builders and in order to address this uh, issue we are uh, looking into the area of it it is one area where we give confidence by having transparency and accountability so basically uh, we are concentrating on these two objective along with the safety issue so that's an interesting point on technology you are saying. So basically the awarding of tenders, the transaction between the private contractors and NHAI and government agencies, that will be far more transparent and that will also speed up the process. Yeah, that's why uh, we started uh, addressing this issue and we uh, introduced the pilot project and by August onwards uh, we will have all the project by e-tendering method. So, what has been the response, sir? What, what, is, the, what is the private sector? Very good saying? response. Uh, that I can share with you that previously we used to give VGF to the tune of 35-38 percent. Yeah. Now our VGF comes out to be roughly 28 percent. And I am glad to inform in few uh, stretches we are getting premium to the tune of 800 crore rupees per annum. And over a period of 25 years it will convert into roughly 34,000 crore rupees. So look the aggressive bidding which we are having, the confidence we could generate among the concessioners. The scenario is uh, very bright. So when you talk about uh, the other challenges that you face, when you are saying that 20 kilometers uh, per day, what are the kind of issues that you are facing which need to be resolved and uh, some help or some support would be required? As I told you that but for the economic recession, we could not award tenders. Now we are addressing that every year now 11, 12, 12, 13 and 13 and 14 will we are at, uh, aiming to award roughly 7,300 kilometer award per uh, year. If you are able to award this uh, consecutive three years 7,300 kilometer and uh, the whatever award so far we have made we will able to have 20 kilometer per day which we uh, started aiming right from the beginning. But we are facing some problem that um, naturally you require update feasibility report, you re required update DPR, you required in a transparent uh, uh, manner the things are uh, being put forward in front of the consciousness. But, the but funding is not an issue sir, money is not an issue. Money is not an issue to that extent because uh, we are have a public private partnership where we are giving B VGF to the tune of 40 yeah. percent. But now the average is coming out to be 25, 28 percent and we are getting premium also. So these are the good signal that uh, the money will not be a problem. So one of the key issues which is lead to, led to delay is land acquisition and uh, uh, can you help us understand how the ministry is tackling this issue? We have appointed a large number of officials to address this issue but land acquisition uh, is a problem which we, we require cooperation of the state government. So sometimes because uh, utility shifting is there, the public protest is there, so we, uh, what we aim we never uh, achieve. So this is one area where we, we face the problem. Along with this, we have some problem in 
forest and wildlife because those areas uh, the environment ministry is having certain guidelines so that is uh, the area where uh, generally land acquisitions take much time otherwise uh, wherever we are uh, getting land acquisition uh, 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 speedily done by the state government we are uh, constructing the roads very but fast. are some projects because are being delayed because of land acquisition and forest clearances yeah i, I can share you that in the state like kerala and goa and west bengal to certain extent we had this problem so what is the way uh, there has to be a policy in a way which uh, the land owners uh, can be uh, communicated you can give better compensation the process of acquisition of the land can be changed so are there any fresh steps that you are looking at uh, in terms of speeding up the process or at least ensuring that everybody feels included in the process so far our land acquisition uh, proviso of my ministry is concerned we have a lucrative uh, proviso of uh, compensation so we are not getting resistance but the entire country is having problem a large scale of uh, land being acquired for industry purpose and all this that issue is being addressed by ministry of rd and we hope that very shortly they will come out with an uh, bill which will address this issue and once the uh, land acquisition policy is place and rr policy is place then i think we'll able to expedite the matter so you are an expert also on this because you were in the rd rural development ministry earlier what are your thoughts what will be your ministry's inputs to the uh, current rd ministry on this i am of the firm opinion that we uh, we have to change the policy the land acquisition cannot be an one time compensation you have to think in the long term strategy also suppose you are uh, constructing a road and the nearby land uh, having some appreciation then the accrual of this appreciation should be part the transfer to the uh, farmers so we have to evolve a system where the state government come forward identify the land and develop that this land will be used for the commercial purpose then bid it let the real estate people should come and whatever uh, the accrual they are getting part of them should be also pass on to the farmers so it should be a one time compensation along with a long term co uh, compensation with the the benefit the the land uh, uh, people are getting i think one of the issue is, is the process in which uh, the land is acquired by uh, by the state government because in the case of uh, noida while it's not about roads but the parallel situation is that it was acquired for one purpose but then it was used for another purpose and then the public interaction uh, that was completely done away with so i think that is important to follow procedure on this count. naturally because whenever you have an uh, appreciation of land either by road or real estate the always the benefit must go to the farmer because he is the land owner you are displacing the entire family for an entire generation not for one generation generation after generation so you have to evolve a system where they get due compensation so whenever appreciation of land is there and whatever benefit is accrual to someone part of them should be also shared with the farmers if we are, we are able to change this mindset i think that the problem will be resolved do you think that uh, employing some of the local citizens the villagers uh, into some of the projects if they can get some employment through these projects especially in the road sector do you think that will also help yeah, partly naturally if you give the employment but road construction is not a permanent activity from that particular area so for the industry is there yes industry will be there for couple of years maybe many more years so for giving uh, giving employment in that industry will serve partly but so for our uh, road construction uh, is concerned it's not a permanent activity in that particular area because once you construct a road in stretch you always uh, go in uh, other area but along the road the highway uh, concessionaire has the right to develop projects on the along the that, highway that so perhaps thinking, those could be used yeah that's if you are uh, align, uh, identify an alignment for road construction then left and right side if you identify 500 meter both the sides right. and reserve that lane for the commercial purpose then the benefit will be, go, uh, be be to the farmer rather than to the the people who are buying the lane so you have to change certain uh, policy so when you talk to some of the private companies when they come to you for discussions are you suggesting that they should be more sympathetic towards the people whose land has been taken away naturally they not the concessioner the entire government will have to be uh, sensitive to this issue because ultimately we are uh, depriving the livelihood of generation we are not uh, alienating for uh, one time the land deprivation is always for generation so it is not like that you are buying a vehicle and you are selling it to someone else so you are alienating for one time also but when you uh, alienating from land you are alienating the family for a number of generation so you have to be sympathetic 
I said that the, you have to have an integrated ministry which uh, deals with the construction of rural connectivity, district and state connectivity along with the NHI. If you have a comprehensive plan for development of all these three sectors together, then it is required an integrated ministry.